What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbit's Used Cars. I get asked probably 10 times a week, Rabbit, is this a good C10? Is this a C10 I should buy? Hey, Rabbit, is this all right for a C10? And I started thinking about it. You know, I should do a C10 buyer's guide. Everyone knows these trucks are red hot. And I think this is going to help no matter if you're looking at a square body, if you're looking at a second gen C10 like this one, or if you're looking at a first gen C10, this is gonna really help you narrow down the search and find the right truck for you. Couple things to look at, you know, just, just things to, to take into consideration while looking at your C10. And I couldn't think of a better example than my 1972 GMC Sierra Grande. So first off, you wanna do a visual inspection and you know, like I said, this truck's been frame off restored. So keep in mind, most of them you're going to look at, it's not going to be quite this nice. But, you know, things you want to look at, you want to look at body gap, body panel fitment. And you're saying, well, Rabbit, you know, that's nothing. Anybody can adjust that stuff up. Not necessarily. And a lot of times, panel gap can tell you a lot about a car's history. You got to think about it. If the hood's sitting up at the back, you got bad hinges nine times out of ten. Also, you're not going to adjust that out, so you're going to need hood hinges. Another thing to look at, too, in your body panel gap, Let's say this corner's really close and that corner's really wide and it's really wide here and close there at the back. That tells you that whole front clip of this thing is actually like that. So that's not good. So that's telling you right there, you may have had a wreck. Something could have happened to this thing. Why is it like that? And it could be just a fitment issue also, but those are things to take into consideration, maybe dig a little deeper in. I'll give you another thing right quick too, talking about the whole wreck thing and collisions. You gotta think about it. These trucks, they're over 40 years old. They've seen a lot of road time. So naturally, you know, when you see one under the hood, you know, you want to look at these inner fender wells. You want to look at the radiator support, all this structure. These are things you want to look at. You want all this stuff to be square. And this thing is dusty under the hood. I haven't drove it in months. But, you know, that being said, you know, you also want to look like the wiring across the firewall, things of that nature. You don't want a rat's nest up there. That thing right there is going to be a problem. Now, if you're looking for a builder truck, that doesn't really matter. But if you're looking for something to run and drive down the road, that stuff does matter. You know, of course, a clean, tidy engine bay, that's a big selling point, that's plus. If they're selling it, it should be clean. You know, a big thing too also, factory air trucks. You know, most of the time they'll tell you, oh, you know, the air just needs a little dose of Freon or something like that. Nine times out of 10, it needs more than that. But you wanna make sure that the important parts are there. All your evaporator condenser, all that stuff is there and ready to go. You know, it's not just a compressor hanging off of there or a few lines. So you definitely want to make sure you got all the guts in it and all that stuff. Because a lot of times, especially back in the day, everybody took this stuff off. And, you know, they put a nice little panel and cleaned it up and filled it in. And, you know, you could add vintage air, but I'll be honest with you, for me personally, especially in a truck like this, you know, it's a factory air truck, I want the factory air stuff on it. Moving around to the front, another thing you want to look at is rust. You gotta think about it, no matter where you're at in the country, rust is your number one enemy in these trucks. You know, they're notorious for rust now right here in the lower fenders, and especially right there in the inner fender wells. You know, you can buy all these parts, but you gotta think about it, you know, if you buy a truck, the less it needs, the less you're gonna have to spend. And also putting patch panels in and things like that can get really expensive in the body shop. Another thing you wanna watch out for in rust, these trucks are notorious for rust right around the top of the windshield. Matter of fact, I had a good friend of mine he bought a C10 and the windshield was rusted out so bad that the windshield actually fell out of it. So you gotta really, really watch out for that. Rust around these rain gutters and you can look at this one right here. Matt, bring it in, look. That's what you want right there when you see a rain gutter in a truck. See how nice and slick and smooth that is? That's the way it's supposed to be. Now, I'll tell you something else and I'm a stickler for this. I cannot stand a damn car you gotta slam doors on to get them to shut. But you want doors to shut good. You want doors that shut tight, you know, and that, that's a big thing. You know, you want to pull on hinges, check things like that. Here's another thing. I want to tell you something. 90% of these trucks that are on the road have had rocker panels and cab corners put in them. Very few have survived and had not needed some type of rust repair or patchwork there. Now come right here and I'll show you. Anybody can make rocker panels and cab corners look good on the outside. The key is making them look slick on the inside and making them look right. You know, you get your factory scene right here and they put these back just like it was since day one. That's how a, a sign of a good job. Another thing for you square body guys you want to watch out for, those trucks were notorious about rusting where the doors were actually welded together. I've actually seen it where you can stick your finger through the door right there. So you definitely want to watch out for the bottoms of your doors. First gen Chevrolet trucks were notorious for rusting out the bottoms of the doors also. And you also got to watch it out on the second gens, but for some reason the first gens and the square bodies were notorious for eating doors. So you definitely, definitely want to watch that. 
Now, okay, we move to the bed. And I'll be honest with you, you can buy every piece of this brand new. Now, this truck has the original bed, all original stainless and bright work. But something you want to watch out for is wood beds. I'm, I like a wood bed. I think they're pretty. You got to think about it. your first gen Chevrolet trucks, your first gen C10s had a wood bed. These trucks did not have a wood bed from the factory in them. Your second gen fleet sides came just like this right here. This is factory fresh. This is what you want to see. A nice clean bed pan, a nice clean headboard, nice tailgate. Opens and shuts like it should. Just like that, kids. Another thing you want to watch out for is adjustment. If this tailgate shuts and you got to give it a little uh to one side or the other, that's telling you it's out of whack. That could be a body bushing. That could tell you something's out of alignment with the bed. Something you definitely want to keep eye for. If it's like that, you might want to start taking a peek under it and start looking at some of those things. Walking around, another thing you want to look out for too, speaking of body adjustment, is this bumper. You want to make sure your bumper gaps are close. That's the thing. You don't want one that's got a bumper gap this wide on one side and real close on the other. That's telling you got an alignment issue, especially if everything looks square with the bed and the bumper's crooked. Looking at the bottom, you're going to find a sad story. Moving it around, you know, another prone rust spot for these trucks. Right here, of course, right here, water and dirt get trapped. So you definitely want to look there. You want to look for any body work, maybe fill into the fender wells, make sure all that's right. That's a big thing. You got to think about it. Just use your head. Just a little bit these trucks back to the rain gutters. Of course, around the back glass. You want to make sure you got any rust issues or anything like that. Now, this is something that is a buyer beware thing that I can't stress enough. A popular thing now is cut down trucks. And you're like, Rabbit, what's a cut down truck? That's where you took a loan bed truck and they actually cut the frame and the bed in two spots to make it into a short bed truck. In the grand scheme of things, there's technically nothing wrong with it if it's done right. You're starting to see a lot of patina trucks are actually leaving the scar from the weld still on it. You know, so they're advertising that it's a cut down truck. But you're getting a lot of guys because of the collectability, these short beds getting so popular that they're cutting down nice long bed trucks and making them into short beds. And they're doing the body work and putting a new, either putting a wood bed in or putting a new bed pan in it. And next thing you know, they're trying to pass it off for a factory short bed. And you can do a lot of covering up to do that, but there's one thing they can't cover up. Follow me, Matt. Everybody knows about, you know, your data plate under the hood of your muscle cars. You know how you can tell if a Chevelle's a real SS or whatnot. Well, on your pickup trucks, you got it right here. This is your parts identification list. And it's going to tell you what the wheelbase is of this truck. Well, this one, all your short bed trucks are going to be between 115 and 117, no matter if it's a first gen, second gen, or a square body. That's going to be your wheelbase. If it's 131 and up, it was a factory loan bed truck. So right there, you ain't going to be able to change that. You know, and plus, if this is still there, this is really neat to keep up with. This truck was put back all original. So that's definitely a nice bonus. So another thing you want to watch out for with C10s, of course, is floorboards. You know, obviously, if you think about it, if you have problems with rockers and cab corners, it's floorboards. But this is something. you got to go a little deeper with this. I mean, you know, you need to do an under the bottom. We're not going to waste everybody's time. Everybody's seen it under the bottom of a pickup truck before. But... This is the thing you need to watch out for, even from the top side. You will really want to start tapping those floorboards, feeling around right around the transmission tunnel, right here where your feet would be, especially right here in the cow. You want to make sure it's solid. Another big, big thing, pull the seat up, look under the gas tank, feel around, make sure it's not soft. All these connection spots, that's usually where you're going to have your rust problems. It's not going to be right in the center. You know, so all these are things to look at on the body side of it. Like I said, we didn't get it out of the bottom, but you know, you definitely want to look at your frame rails, obviously make sure everything's straight and of course solid. A big thing also you want to look at, a lot of these trucks are already lowered. I mean, it's very popular to lower them, just like this one is. This truck's got a DJM lowering kit under it. It's got drop spindle springs. It's had a flip kit on the back with a C-notch. That's important. You know, you got to understand, you know, the days of heating up springs or cutting springs like that, that's a thing of the past. 
And yes, it does lower the truck, but that affects the ride greatly. That's the one thing I like about this truck, sitting on 20s and 22s and floats like a Cadillac down the road. And that's the way it's supposed to be. You gotta think about it, when we did that flip kit, we lowered it five inches automatically. Then of course we threw a block on it to bring it down just a little further. And then we did that C-notch. And you said, well, Rob, why do you gotta C-notch the frame on your truck? Well, you gotta think about it. When you bring that rear end closer to the frame, you gotta have that travel there. If not, rear end house is gonna be bumping the frame and you don't want that either every time you go over a speed bump. So that's definitely something to look at. So when they say it's lowered, you need to go that extra mile and make sure they did the drop spells, they did the springs and they lowered it the right way. It's a safety thing. And also it's just gonna make for a much more enjoyable driving experience. If not, you know, that's something you're gonna to have to redo. You know, I bought hundreds of these trucks over the years and this is just a few things, but some major things. And basically what I do every time that I buy a C10 truck, just a quick walk around, you know, within a few minutes, I know if I got a winner or not, and I'm going to tell you something other than a few butt marks from our model today. This one's ready to rock. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbits Used Cars. I'll tell you what, the only thing I hate about this thing is it tracks everything but women and money. Well, maybe just money. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars.